Welcome to the RenoWorks Pro Getting Started Tutorial. With RenoWorks Pro, you can easily plan home improvement projects using your digital photos. In this tutorial, we'll focus on the exterior, where we'll explore siding, roofing, and window options. To start a new project, take a picture of the home with your digital camera and import it into the software. To import a photo into RenoWorks Pro, click New Project. This is a mini photo editor to prepare your picture. Click Get Photo and browse through your computer to find the picture. In step 2 you may use the red grid as a guideline to straighten your picture. You may crop your picture in step 3 by clicking and dragging your cursor to draw a rectangle over your home. Step 4 allows you to adjust the brightness and contrast of the picture. When you reach step 5, you must tell the software a known measurement on the home so that all the products you place on the home will be in proportion to each other and to the home itself. Let's measure the height of the door. Click at the top of the door. Think of this tool as a measuring tape. Then click again at the bottom of the door, the end of our measurement. Type in the numbers 6 feet 8 inches. In the final step, click finish and name this project. To view new products in your project, you will need to define a new layer for each of the existing surface areas you wish to change. Before you begin to define new layers, however, you may first want to define what is called foreground. Foreground is any object that lies in front of the existing surface areas you wish to change. By laying out the foreground first, defining new layers later will be easier and more efficient. To demonstrate, under the Tools tab, click on Foreground. The masking tools will become active. Draw will be automatically selected. Now click on Magic Brush, as it's the most versatile tool to use when defining foreground. Understand, however, that we can use any one of the four masking tools while defining any new layer of foreground. With the Magic Brush active, let's move our cursor over to the working area and begin to define our foreground. We'll start by defining this tree on the left hand side. Left click and move your cursor along this entire area. It'll look like we're painting the tree red. The red colored mask indicates what we have chosen to define as foreground. It will become invisible when we start to define new layers. Notice how the magic brush is able to distinguish the tree from the stucco on the home. The higher the color contrast between these two surfaces, the better the magic brush works. We can at any time, however, change the size and sensitivity of this brush when working in an area with less contrast. If we make a mistake and end up selecting part of a surface that wasn't intended to be defined as foreground, simply right click with the mouse, or go back to the Tools tab, click on Erase, and then use any one of the four tools to erase the area in question. Some of the other foreground elements we might mask are the lights and the mailbox. Now that all the foreground elements have been defined, notice that we only defined the edges of some of these foreground objects. We did this to save time and because you don't need to define the entire object. Hopefully this will become clear as we continue. Let's define our first new layer. In the Tools tab, click on New Layer. As mentioned earlier, the red colored mask has become invisible. Using the Outline tool this time, we will begin to define the left side of this home. This will be our first siding layer. Starting in a corner of the wall, left click once. A red anchor point will mark our starting position. Working our way around the perimeter of the wall, continue to left click and move the cursor around the stucco area on the left side of the home. Now we'll move the cursor back to our starting anchor point and left click on it to close off the loop. A masking color will now appear. It shows us the surface area we just defined. These masking colors will become invisible when we begin to apply products. We just need to erase where the masking color is covering the window so that we can view the home with the new siding and the original windows. We will discuss applying new windows later on. Let's click on Erase and click on the Rectangle tool, then left click and drag to draw a rectangle over the window. Notice how the tree is still in perfect view. 
Because we spent time earlier defining these objects as foreground, they will always remain visible. Also, notice how fast and efficient it was to define this layer. We were able to quickly outline the wall without pointing and clicking our way all the way around that tree. Let's define one more layer. It's recommended that you define each area of the home separately so that you have the option to apply each area with a different color or product later on if you so choose. Also, it will allow you the ability to uniquely adjust the amount of shading that bleeds through each area. Click New Layer. Still using the Outline tool as it's the most versatile tool to use when defining new layers, we'll begin to define the surface area of the roof. Starting at a corner, left click once to define our starting point. Let's move our cursor along the top of the roof and left click where it meets the gable, then down to the gutter, and then back up to our anchor point, and left click again to close off a loop. A different masking color now appears, showing us the surface area of our newly defined layer. We just need to define the rest of the roofing by clicking around the roofing area on the left. The other surface areas in this picture that could be defined as new layers are the remaining stucco areas, the trim, and the concrete along the bottom of the home. Now that all the new layers have been defined, take a good look at this example project and notice how we chose to split up the layers. There are four different layers, two for the siding, one for the roofing, and one masonry layer. We're now ready to start applying products. In order to apply any product to a layer, a layer must first be selected. Starting with siding, click anywhere inside the siding layer. A dotted line will border the area of our layer and indicate that it's selected. Let's move our cursor to the siding tab. Note, many of the products in RenoWorks Pro are actual manufacturer's products. Click on the name of a manufacturer and you'll see numerous icons appear in the product bar. These icons represent product profiles. Select a product by clicking on it once. Note that the first color in the product palette has been applied. Looking to the color bar on the left hand side, we can view and select any one of the different color options available for that product. Let's move on to the rest of the roofing. Click anywhere inside the roofing layer. Again, the dotted line will border the area and indicate that it's selected. Move your cursor to the roofing tab and click on the product of your choice. Now let's move on to applying new windows. Windows are considered as an object in the software, therefore you don't need to define a new layer for them. Click on the Windows tab, click on a manufacturer, and then choose the window you'd like to apply to the home. Move your cursor to where you'd like to place this new window, left click, and drag to draw a rectangle. The Window Configurator will appear and you'll be able to access more window options such as trim color, grids, and even the ability to put a reflection in the window panes in the View tab. Once you have selected your window options, click Apply. To apply another of the same window to the home, click the Clone button on the upper right. This will make an exact duplicate of the window so that you only need to left click and drag this duplicate to the other side of the home. You may resize the window by moving your cursor to the sides or corners of the window and then clicking and dragging to resize. If you need to access the window configurator to change the color or add grids, just double click on the window and the configurator will appear. It's the same process to apply new doors, vents, and shutters because they're also considered as objects in the software. Other items that are considered as objects to be placed on the home are corner posts, railings, moldings, columns, and anything listed in the add-ons tab. Now, what if you had a picture that was taken at an angle? 